Well, Paul and Janine were uh, both first year students at Royal Easter of Wisdom in the 2007 2008 year. They had spent time in Madonna House, both of them, before they came here to the college, the academy at that time. I just knew them as guests at the, at the community. Since I teach the students every day, I got them quite well. I taught them for that first semester and then part of the second semester uh, until the tragedy on the lake on February 2nd. I got a call Sunday morning, February the 3rd, saying two students were missing. They asked, could I please come to the school? Two of the students decided to drive to Cumbermere on the lake. Now they took uh, Paul and Janine with them. Paul and Janine were on their way to spiritual direction at Madonna House. They got part of the way there and the van went into the lake. The, the driver and the passenger got out. Paul and Janine could not and uh, unfortunately went down with the van. I seem to recall before I came here, I drove down Chippewa Road to where uh, the episode had taken place, more or less. So uh, yeah, I think I pretty well knew that there was some tragedy that happened, a drowning in all likelihood. And so I checked out the scene, but then I came to the school right after that. Well, it was certainly shocking. Uh, we, it was a Saturday that year, 2008, the Feast of the Presentation. Paul and Janine were both considering religious life. February 2nd was decreed by Pope John Paul II as the World Day for Consecrated Life. They had both been to confession night before. They'd been to mass that morning. So we discovered Sunday morning. So the accident happened about three in the afternoon on Saturday, give or take. It created quite an emotional reaction amongst the students and the staff and faculty. That did last for weeks and months. And it still has an emotional resonance with me being here all these years. I'm always reminded of their presence. We decided every year we would make a candlelight procession down to the dock by the lake and pray for Paul and Janine as a group. Well, I led it uh, on a couple of occasions. Basically, we would process from the church after Mass as close to the anniversary as possible down to the wharf with the students. Now, this was more vivid in the first year, second year. People knew Paul and Janine personally. We still continue with the students who didn't know them. There's many messages contained in what happened on that February 2nd. The, the notion that death could happen any time, that we have a limited time in this earth, the good that we do in this earth is not limited or measured by span of time, but by the love and devotion with which we enter into that relationship with God and what life's all about. If they are in heaven now, which I think we can piously hope, we can ask the intercession, especially during these difficult days where we have to uh, navigate through a more difficult time in church and world history. I may have had a conversation with them here when I was the chaplain at that time before the accident. From what I knew of them, you know, they were uh, good students, active, I believe, in pro-life work. Fairly quiet and reserved people from what I remember of them. Many saints are taken in their, in their youth, and it seems so counterintuitive to our modern mindset. Paul and Jean have a, have a very vivid message to give us. There's a reason for everything in God's mind, even if it's difficult in God's providence. And that reason will only be fully known in eternity, but now we can get glimpses of it. And there is, although great sorrow in what happened on February 2nd, 2008, there is also that hidden joy that Pope John Paul II talks about in his letter on suffering, uh, Sibiphus Dolores. It's a very profitable reading, and it helps put these, these tragedies, great and small, into the perspective of eternity and our Catholic faith.